Teresa Ruiz y voy a leer un cuento a ustedes. Un cuentecito que se llama Veloz como el grillo. A ver, vamos a ver. Soy veloz como el grillo. Lento como el caracol y pequeño como la hormiga. Vamos a ver. Y grande como la ballena. Estoy triste como el basset y feliz como la alondra. Vamos a ver. Soy tan bueno como el conejito. Y tan malvado como el tiburón. Estoy solo como el sapo. Y asustado como el zorro. Soy frágil como el gatito. Y fuerte como el bull. A ver, ¿qué más? Soy ruidoso como el león. Silencioso como una ostra. Robusto como el rinoceronte. Y tierno como el correr. Soy valiente como el tigre. Hay muchos animales. Tímido como el camarón. Cursi como el perrito faltero. Huevo. Y salvaje como el mono. Soy perezoso como la lagartija y trabajador como la abeja. Un poco de cada, de cada, y este soy yo. Oh, a mí me gusta mucho este cuento, porque cuando yo empecé de ser maestra, Leí este cuento a mis estudiantes y todavía me gusta leerlo a ustedes. Y, si, y otra vez, el título es Veloz como el grillo. Señora Ruiz, dijiste que cuando empezaste a ser maestra, fue, fue uno de los libros que le, primer libros que leíste a sus estudiantes. ¿Cuántos años tienes así, que estás maestra? Treinta, treinta años. 30 años. ¿Y en qué? ¿Y todavía este año todavía sigues maestra? Sí, este va a ser el último, último año de ser maestra de salón, um, pero espero que voy a seguir leyendo cuentos a mis nietos y otros niños en la biblioteca por muchos, muchos años, ojalá. Pero sí, este es mi último año de enseñar en un salón. ¿Y en qué grado? Primer grado. ¿Y en cuál escuela? La escuela primaria de Phoenix. Oh, wow. Entonces, yo quiero decirte porque yo soy la señora Medina y es mi mamá. Sí. Feliz um, Día de Madres. Eh, porque como <risa> es mi mamá, ella es maestra. Ella fue mi inspiración para ser maestra. Y ahora soy maestra de kinder. So, muchas gracias, oh, mamá. Claro. Happy Mother's Day. <risa> Adiós, niños. <risa> I am Mrs. Medina. I'm the kindergarten teacher at Talent Elementary. And I'm going to read a story now in English. My mom just read one in Spanish. Now I'll read one in English. The title of this book is A Chair for My Mother. The author is Vera B. Williams. And I chose this book because it's about a daughter who loves her mom very much and she wants to do something special for her mom. So let's see what it's about. My mother works as a waitress in the Blue Tile Diner. After school sometimes, I go to meet her there. Then her boss, Josephine, gives me a job too. I wash the salts and peppers and fill the ketchups. 
One time I peeled all the onions for the onion soup. When I finish, Josephine says, good work, honey, and pays me. And every time I put half of my money into the jar. It takes a long time to fill a jar this big. Every day when my mother comes home from work, I take down the jar. My mama empties all her change from tips out of her purse for me to count. Then we push all of the coins into the jar. Sometimes my mama is laughing when she comes home from work. Sometimes she's so tired she falls asleep while I count the money. Some days she has lots of tips. Some days she has only a little. Then she looks worried. But each evening, every single shiny coin goes into the jar. We sit in the kitchen to count the tips. Usually Grandma sits with us too. While we count, she likes to hum. Often she has money in her old leather wallet for us. Whenever she gets a good bargain on tomatoes or bananas or something she buys, she puts the savings and they go into the jar. When we can't get a single other coin into the jar, we are going to take out all the money and go buy a chair. Yes, a chair. A wonderful, beautiful, fat, soft armchair. We will get one covered in velvet with roses all over it. We are going to get the best chair in the world. That is because our old chairs burned up. There was a big fire in our other house. All our chairs burned. So did our sofa. And so did everything else. That wasn't such a long time ago. My mother and I were coming home from buying new shoes. I had new sandals. She had new pumps. We were walking to our house from the bus. We were looking at everyone's tulips. She was saying she liked the red tulips. I was saying I liked yellow ones. Then we came to our block. Right outside our house stood two big fire engines. I could see lots of smoke. Tall orange flames came out of the roof. All the neighbors stood in a bunch across the street. Mama grabbed my hand and we ran. My uncle Sandy saw us and ran to us. Mama yelled, where's mother? I yelled, where's my grandma? My Aunt Ida waved and shouted, She's here, she's here, she's okay, don't worry. Grandma was all right. Her cat was safe too, though it took a while to find her. But everything else in her whole house was spoiled. What was left was burned to charcoal and ashes. We went to stay with my mother's sister, Aunt Ida, and Uncle Sandy. Then we were able to move into the apartment downstairs. We painted the walls yellow, the floors were all shiny, but the rooms were very empty. The first day we moved in, the neighbors brought pizza and cake and ice cream, and they brought a lot of other things, too. The family across the street brought a table and three kitchen chairs. The very old man next door gave us a bed from when his children were little. My other grandpa brought us this beautiful rug. My mother's other sister, Sally, had made us red and white curtains. Mama's boss, Josephine, brought pots and pans, silverware and dishes. My cousins brought me her own stuffed bear. Everyone clapped when my grandma made a speech. You are all the kindest people, she said, and we thank you very much. It's lucky we're young and we can start all over. That was last year, but we still have no sofa and no big chairs. When Mama comes home, her feet hurt. There's no good place for me to take a load off my feet, she says. When Grandma wants to sit back and hum and cut up potatoes, she has to get as comfortable as she can on a hard kitchen chair. So that is how come Mama brought home the biggest jar she could find at the diner. And all the coins started to go into the jar. Now the jar is too heavy for me to lift down. Uncle Sandy gave me a quarter. He had to boost me up so I could put it in. After supper, Mama and Grandma and I stood in front of the jar. Well, I never would have believed it. But I guess it's full, Mama said. My mother brought home little paper wrappers for the nickels and dimes and the quarters. I counted them all out and wrapped them all up. On my mother's day off, 
We took all the coins to the bank. The bank exchanged them for $10 bills. Then we took the bus downtown to shop for our chair. We shopped for four furniture stores. We tried out big chairs and smaller ones, high chairs and low chairs, soft chairs and harder ones. Grandma said she felt like Goldilocks and the Three Little Bears trying out all these chairs. Finally, we found the chair we were dreaming of and the money in the jar was enough to pay for it. We called Aunt Ida and Uncle Sandy and they came right down to their pickup truck to drive the chair home for us. They knew we couldn't wait for it to be delivered. I tried our chair in the back of the truck. Mama wouldn't let me sit there while we drove, but they let me sit in it while they carried it up to the door. We set the chair right beside the window with the red and white curtains. Grandma and Mama and I all sat in it while Aunt Ida took our picture. Now Grandma sits in it and talks with people going by in the daytime. Mama sits down and watches the news on TV when she comes home from her job. After supper, I sit with her and she can reach right up and turn out the light if I fall asleep in her lap. And look at that. The chair is big enough for all three of them to sit. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the book, A Chair for My Mother. Have a happy Mother's Day. Feliz Dia de Madres. Hasta luego.